Page of the Arnold Statesville School Board. So glad to have you with us this morning, Mr. Page. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, first of all, uh, just for our general public, I'm going to let Mr. Page tell you a little bit about the school board and its operation as uh, far as the school system is regarded. And of course, uh, as we all know, elections are coming up here in a few weeks. And I believe we uh, have one school board member that's being, con or one position that's being contended, but I believe the other two uh, had no opponents. So school board has, a, has a, I won't say the opportunity, but has a, the possibility of changing at least one member depending on the election. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's been unfortunate, I think, in the last few years we've seen less and less interest in, in uh, people running for the school board. I know my last election two years ago, uh, no one uh, ran against me or Sam King for that matter in, in either the primary or the general election. Of course, uh, our sexual school board changed a few years ago went partisan and now we have a primary and then the general election uh so we did have some activity in the primary uh with our three seats that are up this election cycle and and just for people who don't know there's seven members to the board of education each and we're done by districts so uh every two years three three's up and the next in two years later four positions are up so it it does change uh had considerable turnover back, I guess, 2014. It changed a lot, and then again in 2016. And it's been fairly stable for the last four years. But we do. We have uh, one position that's being contested here in the general election, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Both candidates, I think, are, be, are you know, uh, very interested in the school system, uh, and uh, I'll just stay completely away from that subject. <laughs> but uh, the, the board's... Uh, not many people really understand the board. I'm going to be honest, I taught 38 years, so, uh, uh, and I taught in eastern North Carolina for seven years before coming up here and teaching with the city system, and then when they merged, I was with the uh, merged our little statesville district. But um, the board flies over about 30,000 feet and looks down on everything. The only employee we hire and fire is the superintendent. The only employee we would suspend would be the superintendent. Uh, and there's so much miscommunication out there. I, I know uh, if in the past we've had teachers and, and uh, some coaches suspended for a while, and it was always the board did it. The board did it. We we don't. We we uh, you're the only person that we can fire, or suspend, or and uh, know where to transfer you to. So we can't transfer you. We don't transfer people. Uh, that's all. And the superintendent's job and uh, I think there's a lot of miscommunication and misunderstanding in the public as to exactly what the board does. Our main concerns are policy and we have a, I should have brought a notebook, you know, uh, for the people that are on Facebook to see. Uh, it's about four to five inches thick of hundreds and hundreds of policies. Three, 380 plus policies that the board deals with and, and myself. And there are many pages on some of them. And yes. what people don't understand is most of these policies, we're a member of the North Carolina uh, School Board Association, and you almost have to be because these policies change on a regular basis. I think at our next board meeting, we're going to have like 2025 that we're going to yes. have to vote on. And every time a law changes, and it seems like our legislators change something, they'll change the name of a program. And that will change 10, 15 policies. Absolutely. It, and then that has to come down. So we spend, we spend a tremendous amount of time in reviewing policies. And we're able to tweak them to our own area, uh, which we can do. And then, of course, that goes back and has to be changed. And now, of course, it's all kept on uh, uh, computer. You can go to our website. You can go in and look at any policy we've gotten uh, that's been approved. Uh, and you'll be surprised how many policies we do have. So our next biggest thing is, of course, looking at the budget. And I think that's what we're going to talk about mostly today. Uh, Jeff, I understand you got some questions uh, yes, that come up for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh some good questions, I think, and of course, uh, we're you know we want to be transparent. It's taxpayer money. Appreciate everything we get. And uh, as Chairman Page said, um, you know the policies come down to us, and the local board does have some some ability to do some local things. They can make them a little bit stricter, but we can't uh, supplant state law. 
But then, of course, it lands on my desk, and we have to figure out among my administrative team is how to put in thousands of pages of procedures so that we do things consistently across our district. And, of course, that's typically the complaints we get if it's not done the same from school to school. And we do an enormous amount of training continuously, not only with our staff, but it's my responsibility to provide the board professional development and work with them. But one of the questions, um, I think the budget's always a sore spot as a taxpayer before I come into education. You know, I, I made this, uh, told this story before, Chairman Page. You know, I, I was probably one of those individuals that fussed about what I paid in taxes and until I uh, accumulated a couple of God, godchildren. Uh, uh, someone was brave enough to let me be their godfather. Uh, oh, that's a good word. Yeah, but the, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, it depends how you take it. Right, right, right. So uh, I walked into Celeste Hinkle, and, you know, I, I was ashamed as a taxpayer of the it wasn't that the school wasn't kept clean. It was just the building was so old it needed renovations. And, you know, I told my wife on the way in the car, and I said, well, you know, I think God checked me on this one. I'm, I'm going to repent for uh, not paying what I feel should be a fair share. And I'm not an advocate of taxes by any means. I am an ultra-conservative. But uh, this county has done a great job of providing us with capital support. I've worked in two counties that were impoverished. Um, and it is almost a shame to walk into some of the school buildings those counties had. So I commend the taxpayers of Iowa County. We want to make sure we're transparent with all your money. But one of the questions, one of the first questions we got um, is just why we don't report out all the debt. Uh, we do typically separate it in general operation and capital. And I think one of those misnomers out there, Chairman Page, is um, that 53, 50, 53 percent of the budget is towards education. And I think people for, forget, and I did until I, I looked this number up, there's 16 education entities in our county that receive taxpayer funding. Howbeit, we're one of the largest, and I'll let you take over from there and tell us some of the numbers. Well, you know, it, the budget is always everybody's concern, and, and I tell you, social media is just a uh, – it. It, 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 there's so many things on social media that you read that just uh, you go, huh? And it's just not the truth. And, and addressing, I, I try to address these every time someone asks a question. Uh, first off, you, you do hear it a lot. And, and that number, uh, I, was, I was speaking with a group of people uh, six months ago, actually before the COVID, so eight or nine months ago. And I, I asked the group, and this group had our, a lot of politicians here in the county in it. And uh, they come up with the figure of 54%. And actually, when we, we look at the budget last year, the education of the county's budget, and these numbers come from the county, uh, and the county does a good job of putting their, their budget numbers out. If you can go on their website and find their numbers. You can go on our website and find our number. And this is something else that's been put out, is, is the county doesn't know how we spend our money, and we're not transparent. We're the most transparent uh, elected group in, in, in North Carolina, I probably, and I know in Iowa County. Uh, our budget goes to the commissioners, every bit of it. Our audit reports go to the commissioners and the local government commission. Uh, we're totally transparent with everything. We uh, invite the commissioners to come over and go through our budget with our CFO anytime they want to. Last year they took us up on that. Uh, it, 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 I know I spent a lot of time with Jeff McNeely when he was on the county commissioners going through our budget. And he'll tell you, hey, they spend every penny exactly like they say they're going to spend it. And I, I do think we've been very frugal with money. Uh, I think we've uh, made a lot of improvements. And I've been on the board six years, and I've seen a drastic amount of improvement in that. But let's go back to the figures. Uh, when we talk about our budget, uh, most of our budget is state money. Mm -hmm. And we have very, very little control over state money. If, yes. you take, if you take state money, they're going to tell you exactly how to spend it. Absolutely. It's called PRC codes, and you can only spend the money allotted in that code for that purpose. And, and, so, and then if you take federal money, it's even worse because they're going to tell you not only how you spend it, but they're going to be exactly how you're going to spend it. And you have very little freedom with federal money. So really the only money we have a lot of freedom with, and we don't, and, and that's getting less and less freedom, is, is our local current expense money. And that's what is normally sent out. Uh, you're right. In most cases, the capital money is, is not recognized. But when I came on the board, I quickly realized 
Our county commissioners have caught a lot of flack for being very low on the totem pole in North Carolina with, with funding. And when I looked at it, they, they've done an excellent job on our, our capital over the years. Yes. Uh, we certainly can't complain about our capital. Uh, back during the uh, Dr. Holiday era, the school system sued the commissioners, and they went to mediation, and they come up with some formulas. And then uh, the formula with capital was uh, kept, and, and it's, it's worked well. It's based on how well the county's doing and what they take in, and it, it worked well. Uh, the formula for current expense was uh, not adhered to after the recession in 2008. They um, quit funding that, and I understand that. They probably couldn't fund it. So, uh, we are, and now this year they did away with the formula. The county is not doing this formula anymore for capital. They've completely changed it. So a lot of changes are going on. We asked the county... Uh, to please help us in our current expense because we were short in current expense and doing well in capital. And they listen, and they come up with a new formula that's really helping us in current expense. It's going to last. Just like this year, we were able to hire six nurses. I'm so proud we've been able to hire nurses, student assistant personnel. We've got uh, SRO in every middle and high school and one for every two uh, elementary mm -hmm. schools. We've made some great progress in 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 providing security, safety, and security for our students. All right, let's get back to the figures. The actual figure for our little states of schools, if you look, last year the county, 47% of the county's budget went to education. This year, 44% of the county's budget goes to education, a slight reduction. Now, our little states of schools gets 28.7% of the tax uh, that is our take of the total county budget and so that's been really misconstrued as 50 53 percent like you said it's idle states where really gets 28.7 percent now that is about 70 percent of the actual education budget but uh, a whole lot less than everybody thinks and and so i think when we're accused of misspending money they they really don't understand hey how about everybody else? Like you said, 16 different system schools, and there's, there's Morsel Graded, and there's Mitchell, and there's also charter schools that are getting getting some of this county money. And so... Absolutely, and I didn't see those on, when we were on our way in to talk about budget and be transparent. You know, I, I think a lot of people, uh, we get blamed for a lot of things. But I want to specifically a answer the the debt service which is something that you normally don't see it's out there you kind of have to look for it and i'm going by the county figures uh this year our capital debt service for this year is seven million one hundred fifty eight thousand six hundred thirty eight dollars that's what we pay for the to finance the bonds uh the other borrowing that the system's done over the years uh to build our schools and look after our schools. And I know somewhere on your questions they were talking about our schools in bad shape. Let me tell you, if you'll go around to any other district, you, it's hard to find a district in North Carolina that's got better schools than our though. Yeah, and like I said, I've worked in two other counties, and uh, I just commend the taxpayers here. Um, those counties, you walked in buildings that were 50 to 70 years old and not renovated. Well, we have done an excellent job, uh, and we've really... I'm very proud of what we've been able to do if we uh, look at uh, uh, north and south or, or up there in age, built in, what, 67? Mm. Yes. Way before I came to Idle County. Uh, yet we've kept them up pretty well. They're, they, You know, there's some, er there's some areas. We've got a, a wing at uh, Harmony needs to replace mm. them. We know that. We've got some uh, uh, the old uh, CTE building at Statesville High School is going to have to be replaced. It's the floor separated from the walls we had we were looking at remodeling it and the engineers come in there and said absolutely not you, you, you this building's got to be torn down so we we do get seven million and that, that that we pay every year for our our capital improvements uh uh in in, in debt service uh I'm sorry. I got that's for our capital improvements our debt service is 18 million five hundred sixty three thousand five hundred fifty three dollars so we're paying 18 million 
for debt service, and then we have seven million for capital improvements. So that makes a tremendously big chunk of our money. Mm-hmm. And this, and of course, some of that is is paid for by the bond, which has ad valorem tax assigned to it. So let me go back because I'm kind of misstated there. And the lottery I, also pays for capital. Yes, we do pay for some of debt our service. But that I'm looking at just local money here, mm-hmm. just just our local uh, money from the uh, county commissioners. So when we look at the total now, it was 18 million, 18.5 million in debt service. When we add all that together. The county's putting almost $72 million in our states of schools, and our next biggest system, uh, Morsel, they're putting about $22.5 million into Morsel graded. When you look at the total, Morsel's debt service is $7,079,616. So a little less than ours. Now, when we start dividing that out per student, uh, the debt service for our states of schools is 3000 $73 per student. Mm-hmm. Uh, the debt service at Morsel is $3,328 per student. So their debt service is, is considerably higher than ours. Uh, so it, it, we do get a lot of money from the county. I'm very proud that the county's given us this kind of money. And uh, uh, we're doing a good job with it. I really do think we're doing a good job. So, but we're not taking... Idle states with schools does not get 54% of the county budget. We get 28.7%, and I think and I, that's some, I think that total budget was around somewhere between 155 and $160 million is what we take in off property taxes. Y- you so. know, their, their, their budget uh, last year was $222 million. Okay. This year their budget's $230 million. So that would include sales tax in that. Property tax is about, yeah. Yeah, yeah everything's in that. That's their yeah. budget. And I, th- I think it's what's happened too, Chairman Page. You know, what people forget is when I grew up, back in the day of textiles and furniture, a lot of the tax burden was paid for by industry because we had factories around industry. And again, the growth in economic development in Iowa County has certainly helped keep our property taxes at a low rate compared to other counties. And unfortunately, what we've seen is counties that have lost industry, they've had to shift that burden to the property tax. Uh, And we've been fortunate enough not to do that because we're, again, growing economically. We're growing as a system also. Well, that's one. And that, that and that, the growth's great. But it really causes a problem, especially when you grow in one area like ours is in yeah. the southern end. Then you have to build. Well, you you got to build schools. And thank you to the uh, public for approving the bond for the new high school. Uh, I mean, we're desperate. It appears, am I correct, we're going to go over 2,000 students at Lake Norman this year? Uh, we keep getting enrollments every week. So we're right at 2,000 students at Lake Norman, even, th- even though we're in the COVID crisis. Well, you know, that's okay right now. But when we get back to school... I hope it's soon, but when we do get back to school, you know, that's, that's more than that's, that, that yes, school should That's have. beyond capacity, yeah. yes. So, you know, uh, and, and I heard someone say, well, if you didn't have these choice programs, you wouldn't be overcrowded. Well, there's 400. Uh, last I counted, it was 471 students at Lake Norman going to a choice program somewhere else. Yes, and they weren't. We would already be <laughs> we, over. We, yes. I don't know where we'd be putting them because we, we've hit a uh, – we may be able to put another mega unit on the property we're, we're right on the watershed boundary and and when you're on the war when it's tough you can only build on a quarter of your property but we built some retainment ponds and we we're able to build up 50 percent we've got it covered and and uh we're just not gonna be able to continue to add on or, or do anything at, at lake norman so we had to have a school and and Morsel had to have a middle school i mean Morsel's was growing too uh i'm not not Saying, you know, the growth in the southern end, and we're going to have to have it. Now, the southern end also has a very high income per per capita in the southern end, and that skews our entire district by making us a tier one district. Yes. And you want to explain a little bit about the tiers? Well, the tier, economic tier, and, of course, I served on the Economic Development Council in a couple of districts. Um and I'll just make this comment. You're, the quality of the education system you have determines the industries that, that are going to locate in your county. So uh, I would think uh, no one out there could argue the fact that we need a great education system to attract industry in because they need qualified workers. But Tier 1 counties uh, to Tier 3, 
Of course, there's 40 counties in the state that are most impoverished, Tier 3 counties. And we're a Tier 1, which means uh, we're a great we're great as far as economics are considered. Uh, we're sort of thrown in that same boat as Charlotte, Meg, Union, a few of the larger counties, even though not, we're not quite as large. But Idle County is so diverse. At the northern end, you have a lot of agriculture um, in the county. And, of course, that by, by no means uh, is an urban center. So what happens to us, we lose a lot of federal funding because we're an econ uh, economic tier one. Uh, again, federal money that uh, Chairman Page spoke about, a lot of our federal money comes about from being uh, economically challenged. So we lose all that. So again, have to rely more on local budget than uh, some other districts do. So again, we uh, get quite a few million in federal money for Title I schools, and those are our, our most impoverished students. So we have a, a wide gamut of students here and a, a diverse group of students, which is great to have, but it challenges us in the services we have to put out there. But as you said, if it wasn't for the choice programs, uh, we would already been in trouble at Lake Norman. We would have had to build a school three or four years ago, and you know we've already taught the new high school. We're anticipating 1,600 with the expandability out to 2,000, but just sitting down and looking at the growth, I think by about the time we open the doors, it's going to be at capacity already, and then we have to look at elementary and middle school. So we, we've got a lot of challenges. It, it is, and the growth's really challenging us. I can't believe we're about out of time, Jeff, and we've just we've not hardly hit but one question. <laughs> I know you had a list. Can I can I say just a couple things? I do want absolutely. To, there's a, a, I do want to mention to people. A lot of people don't understand our benefits have gone up so much. Uh, for an eligible employee in Idaho State Schools, we pay 29.33% benefits plus over $6,000 for insurance. So that is one reason that we, when when you see salaries, add 33% to it. But one of the questions we had, Jeff, that I did want to address was they were talking about supplies. That why do so many of our teachers have to buy supplies? Uh and you had that budget somewhere. It come out to about a thousand dollars per teacher per school. And here, here's another one of those quagmires. Uh, we're governed by school improvement teams, so there is a structure that's mandated through state law that we adhere to. So if we hand you as a principal thirty thousand dollars or three hundred thousand, you just can't go spend it as you wish to. You have to get the school improvement team, which is a group of teachers, uh, and typically a parent. I'd hope in each school sits on that team, and they sort of decide where we're going to spend that money, whether it be in paper, crayons. And I'm, I made this comment. The Bible says this, too. You know, sometimes we get our uh, need supplies, not our wants. And as a teacher, you were a teacher, I always it got under my skin about pencils. So I can tell you, uh, in my room, you were going to find about 5,000 pencils in about 15 cups because nothing hurt me more than to, for a kid to get in trouble for not having a pencil. So I made sure out of my pocket, I was going to give you pencils, but, you know, that's that's some on the kids, but, again, it's just one of my nuances. But you mentioned colored pencils when you were doing some wiring. So just things, as a teacher, you would like to have. Is there, You know, we would like to fill those wants, but the budget's not there. We do fill the basic need. Well, you know, I, I really think, and I, I've, I've told teachers, if you've requested something you need, and you got turned down, send me your request. I want to see it. And I've never had a teacher send me a request that was turned down. Now, I, I know they are, but I've never had a teacher send me a request that was turned down. I think we do an excellent job. When you put get over $1,000 a teacher, and, mm. and, you know, it's that's a lot of supply money. You know, the state was talking about giving them, what, $350? Oh, credit but card, yeah. I, I just want people to know that, that not only this past year, we provided a total for supplies to each school was uh, $1.7 million for air, all our schools. That's well over one for teaching. And that didn't include Title I dollars no, that we had CTE. additional. Or No, or career technical. Yeah, no. Or, uh, so that's additional supplies. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, we also supply fine art allotment, office supplies. So we we are trying to provide for the teachers. Not many districts provide what we do. So we got a lot to talk about, and what we're going to do in the next few weeks uh, is try to answer some of the questions for our general public. We'll have, uh, of course, uh, Chairman Page to come back, and we'll have some other people step in and talk about some of the things that you have questions about. 
So that said, thank you to, for listening in to Eye on Education, and please give us your comments, your feedback. Uh, and as always, we want to be as transparent as possible. Join the Ardell Statesville School System Superintendent.